Hey, I'm Tim P with ABC Acres. That's right, Tim P, not Tim Southwell. You'll start to see me a little more in these videos as uh, I talk about a little, some more things that I know and probably learn a few things from you guys as well. A little bit about myself is, uh, my full name's Tim Puchkowski. If you can spell it, you can add me on Facebook, but good luck. Uh, I worked in the sustainable development industry uh, where we remodeled homes and uh, did it with uh, sustainably sourced materials as well as reclaimed materials. Um, then we also did backyard farm installs, hydroponic installs, aquaponic installs, uh, worked for tree companies, arboretums, oatmeal landscaping business, a little bit of everything, uh, all outside, all work with my hands and yeah. Um, but today I'm going to be talking to you about hydroponics which hydroponics, uh, basic definition would be the growing of plants in a soilless system, uh, but the roots are submerged in a solution. That solution containing all of the minerals and nutrients and fertilizers uh, that the plants need. And that is added from us uh, through certain measured amounts. So we'll take a closer look at this tower and I'll kind of dissect it and tell you a little bit uh, about all the different parts. And yeah, we'll get into it. All right, so here is the tower. We have simple parts of it. Right here we have our basket. And in the basket is the hydroton. Hydroton is simply just a expanded clay. And what that does is provide the uh, plant's roots with structure to kind of grow around and grow on um, as to anchor itself. Uh, you know, the clay also provides uh, water retention and uh, helps retain moisture so that, you know, we can keep those roots nice and hydrated. So going from there is, you know, there's approximately 18 uh, different baskets in this tower and from there we go down to our five gallon bucket and inside that gallon uh, five gallon bucket that's where our water is stored as well as the pump that pumps the water from the reservoir all the way up to the top and that uh, sprinkles down and you know, covers all of the roots and all the hydroton and water and keeps those roots hydrated and uh, keeps them sucking up those minerals and uh, nutrients. All right. Now that you have your system, you'll have to regulate and monitor it. So what that means is you're going to have to pick up a few tools to measure these parameters. So what you'll need is a pH meter, which that will measure your pH. And if you paid attention in biology or chemistry, you'll know that that measures how acidic or how basic your solution can be. From there, you'll also need a TDS meter. This one actually measures your parts per million, EC slash CF, as well as uh, your temperature. Uh, TDS stands for total dissolved solids. Uh, and that's measured with parts per million. What that tells you is that how much uh, fertilizer you have in your solution. So our lettuce requires a reading between 540 and 800. And so if you have a reading of 400 parts per million, that means you need to add a little bit of, of uh, fertilizer to increase that reading to that range. From there you have your EC, which is similar to parts per million, um, but EC stands for electric conductivity. And so, uh, of course, uh, electric charge is transferred through uh, a saltier solution. Meaning, uh, if you have a saltier solution, that means you have a higher concentration of fertilizer. So, if you have a reading of 2.4, and our lettuce re requires a reading of about 1.2. Uh, that means you would have way too high of a concentration of fertilizer. And thus, you'd have to add water to dilute your solution. Uh, and so, yeah. And 
with another note on pH, um, you know, you need to pay attention to your pH because that'll dictate uh, potentially if nutrients can be bioavailable or if your plant can even uptake those nutrients. So there, typically every plant has a sweet spot of where you want your pH. Um, our lettuce, I like to have it at about a 6.3. That seems to be about the sweet spot. So, um, you know, that's doing well, as you can see. So yeah, that's a little bit about hydroponics. Uh, stay tuned, because I'll go into these readings a little bit further, a little bit more in depth. And uh, yeah, help you out with any sort of um, uh, troubles you're having with your system, if you have a system going, and how to monitor and regulate those readings. Now you may ask me, why do you want to do hydroponics as opposed to good old fashioned, tried and true soil? Well, efficiency is the biggest thing. You can grow these 18 plants in about one square foot versus this eight, these 18 plants in a regular raised garden bed would take up significantly a larger amount of space. So we can grow vertically and make the most of unused space, such as in our greenhouse, where we could potentially grow racks that are in the you know, middle of the room, raised up, and pretty much maximizing the most amount of space as we can. So yeah, that just about wraps it up. Now, before I leave, can any of you guess what this IBC toad is gonna be used for for our next upcoming project? Let me know in the comments, see if you can guess it correctly. But until next time, happy growing.